Hi, I'm Franklin Miller, and I hope this episode finds you well. It is episode 61 of Franco's World. It's going to be a little quick one, a little shorty. I'm running out of space on my podcast, uh, the hosting site. I have 400 megabytes or something like that a month. I just upgraded it because now I do interviews a lot. The numbers are increasing. The downloads are increasing. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your day. And remember, this is only an exhibition. This is not a competition. Please, no wagering. Today's episode, like I said, is a 15-minute shorty. Uh, I got a few things I want to talk about. It's a little surprise episode. I'm going back to interviewing a very funny comic. That episode will come back on uh, on Tuesday, interviewing him tomorrow. I'm excited about that one. But one thing I want to talk about first. Uh, let's talk about Twitter real quick. Just really, really quickly, I want to talk about Twitter. Something is going on on my Twitter account where... I don't know if I've been hacked. I don't know if if people just don't like me anymore. I don't know if maybe a bunch of people have deactivated their accounts. But for some reason, like I don't follow as many as I used to. And I have lost an exponential amount of followers. I'm about to get to under 1,000 for the first time since I was like a junior in high school. I mean, something is happening. I don't know. I, think, I guess people are waking up and they realize I'm not good. I think maybe that has something to do with it. Um, I don't know. It's weird. I, 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 I thought I was being hacked and like it was unfollowing people and people, I guess, took offense to that. And they're like, hey, forget this guy. You know, he, he, he thinks he's big time. But I digress. Uh, I saw a tweet yesterday and it, and it confused me because it came from a person. And this, I will, I will total an- anonymity here for this person, you know, um, but they are a person that that is super pro capitalism, super pro. Um, let's just say they the the people that run the country currently they have no qualms with, they have no problem with them, and that's fine. You can do whatever you want. But then they, then they said this, and I and I had a couple thoughts on it. So they tweeted. They said, "It really bothers me that people." I'm gonna read this in their. I'm not even gonna change anything. Okay, I'm gonna read it verbatim. Really bothers me the people sitting home on unemployment not doing a thing is getting more dollar signs than someone that's working right now. Dot dot dot. Someone is someone that's is sitting at home is working more than So my question to you, buddy, is so you agree raising minimum wage is a good thing? Is that I that's a pretty communist thing to say. For someone that, that has such staunch capitalism stances, you you think raising we you think we should raise the workers' wage? I I concur. We're we're not that far off, my friend. I'm glad I'm glad you're finally coming around. It's good to hear that people are finally coming around. But it's also weird to me that people that share the same sentiment as him believe that wearing a piece of fabric during a global pandemic is is a sign of weakness is a sign of uh some sort of conspiracy to get Trump out of office this is bananas to me okay so so the republican people i don't even know if you call them republican just crazy people um that think that this is a hoax i think this isn't real here's the deal okay i'm going to keep all names out of this but i know for a fact Fellow Republicans, uh, fellow as in you and them, that have had corona virus, that have had COVID-19, have dealt with it, no people have dealt with it. I know people that have named their children after presidents, Republican presidents, Republican leaders, figureheads of the party that have, that have dealt with this. So for, so for you to say that it's not real, I mean, you can't even call yourself a Republican anymore. You have to call yourself a crazy person. You are a tinfoil, you're in the tinfoil hat party now. That's what you're in. Raising the wages. So you're, okay, you're contradicting yourself here. Twitter is weird. Twitter is weird. My Twitter's on following people. You can follow me there at Franco's World underscore. I'll follow you back. I, I don't care. But uh, I saw a basketball commentator who has a very famous voice, you could say. And he has been going ballistic about coronavirus lately. And I want to read his tweets to you. I'm going to read two, maybe three. But I'm going to read two to you in his voice 
And whenever I have emphasis, that's when he, like, he he has, it's Dick Vitale. It's Dick EV. I don't know why I'm trying to hide it. Dick Vitale, if you're a sports person, he's a basketball guy. I think he's an old school Brooklyn guy. He stabbed himself in an eye oh, in his eyeball with a pencil when he was a kid. And he has made a career out of calling basketball games, which is great. It's a, I mean, he's an all timer. I know a lot of people are, are saying he's too old. He can't keep up, you know, but he's a classic guy. You kind of just have to let that guy do what he wants. He's like that crazy uncle. OK, so I'm going to read his tweets in his voice. This is my impression of Dick Vitale. It annoys me hearing people on social media say the media is promoting COVID-19 pandemic. These Oh, okay, he said, instead of numbers, he puts hashtag apostrophe yes. Okay, so I'm just saying numbers. These numbers are scary, and calling it a hoax is pure wackiness, baby. <laughs> Do you think the 140,000 dot families that had a loved one die is a hoax? Come on, get real, baby. <laughs> get real, baby. Awesome baby with a capital A. He didn't say that, but I don't even know if I can read any more of that. I mean, Dick Vitale, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's a legend of the game. Hold on, I think I got one more. Oh yeah, my recent tweet about people believing it is the media hyping up the COVID nineteen numbers are out of touch with reality. Many are making cases that don't trust the numbers. Please, you are living near. Oh my gosh, my dog's freaking out. Troy, I'm not yelling. My dog just ran in here. Get out, Troy. Get out. Please, you're living in Never Ever Land. If you don't believe this is a disease, is rampant and for real. I don't know. It makes no sense. Troy, you got to get out. Leave. Troy, leave. Troy, leave. Troy, out of here. Out. 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 Oh, my goodness. Troy thinks I'm screaming at him. So my dog has severe social anxiety, and I am not allowed to watch baseball around him. I'm not allowed to do podcasts around him. I'm not allowed to do anything around him. Because he starts shaking and he starts freaking out. And I understand because it's like I'm being loud right now. And he thinks maybe he's getting yelled at or maybe I'm in trouble. But I'm good, Troy. And I feel bad about it. My dog just ran in here and started getting on top of me and freaking out and shaking. But he's gone now. I got him out of here. All because it thanks a lot, Dickie V. Thanks a lot, Dickie V. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I want to talk about... Uh, so last week's episode with my buddies, we talked a little bit about... Uh, their private school that they went to as kids. And I had a couple people message me about their private schools that they went to as kids. And uh, some of the strict guidelines they had, obviously uniforms, uh, dress code, that type of stuff. You know, can't do this, can't do that. But more in, more in particular, the people that went to the high school, like private high schools that were really strict, they had a even more interesting time because in high school – you get the sexual education talk. You get sex ed in high school, uh, in some places, I guess. I can share my experiences with sex ed. I, I, I'll, I'll make that the title of this episode. Something about sex ed. I don't know. I mean, sex sells, so let's get the numbers up. Let's get over, I don't know, have 500 downloads this month. We're close. Let's just do it. Why not us? Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Sex ed... In high school, for me, it was, all right, um, here's what it is. Here's what can happen. Here are the consequences. Here's a paper. Sign it. Say you won't have sex. And uh, also, let's just watch Claudia with a chance of meatballs for the rest of the day. I mean, that was it. In ninth grade, I vividly remember having the, the there was a special person that would come in and give these talks about sexual education. And, you know, they wouldn't do the classic, you know, condoms on banana. They wouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, but they would they would tell you about all this stuff. And middle school was the worst, actually, now that I think about it. Because cause I remember slides, or not slides, but just like a video of like, here's what can happen if you have sex. And it was, it was terrifying. It was very scary. And uh, Grant threw up. I don't think he threw up because of that. I think he was actually just sick. But there was a slide, and it was pretty vivid, and he lost it. I mean, he he can attest to that. He will, I will get him to admit that, maybe on air next week. But yeah, high school, ninth grade. I don't remember much about. No, I remember we had to watch a child being born. I think maybe tenth grade, and I and the it was the football coach 
who was uh, the health teacher. And yeah, I just looked straight ahead of the board. I did not watch the child come out of there. I could not bear witness to that. I did not do that. Uh, cause I'm a, I'm a big wussy and I get scared easily, <laughs> scared. I get, uh, you know, uh, just like, just, I don't feel good when I see things like that. And, uh, I, I remember like in ninth grade, you know, they're telling us about like all that can happen. And then like the next day we watch Claudia with a chance of meatballs, which I think is a true testament to the, uh, West Virginia public education system. You know, they're like, hey, just, you know what? Uh, instead of instead of you know learning methods and learning this and that, just sign this paper that says you won't have sex and uh, yeah, keep it rolling. But this one woman that uh, messaged me, she had an incredible experience. I want to share it with you. Obviously, she's gonna, she's going to remain remain nameless. Okay, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't just out anybody. But she went to a private high school. This is in Texas. She went to a private high school in Texas, and it sounds like banana land. I mean, it sounds crazy she said they had to sign an honor code okay i guess i can read it in their voice we had to sign an honor code and you had to graduate a virgin or you'd get expelled they would take your phone at random times and read your text to make sure you're not having sex the worst i got in trouble was i got in school in school suspension for wearing one gray sock and one white sock instead of following the dress code and wearing two white socks. I mean, signing a petition that says you won't have sex, but then is one thing, okay? I have a piece of paper, you know, it's probably not a legally binding contract. Probably wouldn't hold up, hold up in a court of law. It definitely won't hold up in a court of public opinion. But for them to go through your phone and evasion of privacy, such a young age when you're trying to figure stuff out, weird, weird stuff. And the dress code stuff, well, that's on you. I mean, you should have known the code. You should have worn two white socks. I have no issues with the school punishing you for that. I got in school suspension in middle school. Most of the time, it was for, like, joking and laughing and uh, making people laugh in class. Or just not doing my homework or forgetting my homework. I would always try to connive my way out of, like, getting to do homework or maybe do half of it or something. And... No, 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 no. No, I got detention too many times. That's what it was. I got detention too many times for joking in class. That's exactly what it was, Franklin. And when you get 10 detentions, I lived in detention the seventh grade year, you get in-school suspension. And what in-school suspension is at Blennerhassett Middle School in 2007, 8, I don't know. You're going to sit in a random classroom in a corner with a desk by your lonesome. You're going to get random workbooks. They probably don't even pertain to classes you're taking necessarily. And you're going to sit there. You're going to answer the questions in the book. You're going to read and write all day. Sometimes you might even, if you get a strict teacher, they might hand you a dictionary. They might have you start at A and just start writing. Word and definition. I vividly remember somebody having to do that. Here's the word. Here's the definition. I don't know if they made you write it out phonetically, but still. It was wild, man. West Virginia public education system. Wild. All in all, uh, I survived. So I guess it was, uh, I guess it was correct. But anyways, like I said, this is a quick episode. Thank you everyone who has listened to it and has subscribed to the podcast and has downloaded the podcast. The numbers are increasing. Tell your friends about the show so it can grow, baby. This is a rocket ride. And I want everyone to come with me on our trip to Mars or wherever we're going or wherever we're going. And uh, yeah, that guy's a total communist in the beginning. I mean, just an absolute commie. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, keep taking care of yourselves. And this is a weird time. And I don't think I've been wrong ever about anything that I've said in the podcast, especially when it comes to coronavirus. When I said it was one big long wave and that we weren't going to be united as a country because people think it's a political action to wear a piece of fabric so you don't kill someone during a global pandemic and people continue. And I'm right about both of those things. And I said the crime's going to go up. And what do you know? Crime's going to go up. And I said the country's not going to be back for a long time. The country's not going to be back for a long time. The fall of the Roman Empire is upon us. It was fun while it lasted. 
and rich people get to do art. It gets hoard out and it's not as good anymore. And all this stuff, oh, I gotta go.